Hey, what's up? This is Max from Splice, and today I'm going to show you how I made Skynet by hacking Ableton and Pigments to make music for me. Uh, my goal with this project was to be able to press one button, the space bar, and have ambient music come out from the background. So it's going to sound something like this. Okay, so this kind of music production can largely be referred to as generative music. There have been a lot of composers and artists that have done this sort of thing over the years. Um, but two of the specific inspirations that I wanted to shout out for this are uh, A, Chuck Sutton's TikTok page, uh, where he does a lot of really, really cool stuff, even cooler than this. Um, and Keith Fullerton Whitman's piece, Generators. We're going to put um, links to both of those in the description. Making generative music in a DAW can go super, super deep, especially if you're good with object-based programming, Max for Live, and that sort of thing. I'm kind of conversant, but it's not my forte, so I just used pre-made Max for Live devices and routed them within the project. Uh, if you want to write your own, you definitely can go even deeper than this. Okay, so basically the way it works is this. I take MIDI from a MIDI source, and then at each instance of pigments on each of those tracks, add something that is going to make the MIDI source a little different, right? So the MIDI source here, I have a C3 playing every eight bars, um, and then that is going into a random audio effect, which is going to scroll through uh, root notes at a, it, it'll add a random number between minus 12 and 12 semitones to the input. And then I'm gonna use the key, keys and scales uh, MIDI device to lock it into a key and scale. Uh, I put the chance up to 100% so that it's always triggering a different root note every time the MIDI note re-triggers. Cool, so uh, then let's start with the high synth pluck. This is going to take the MIDI input from the MIDI source after the mixer. Uh, and for right now, it's gonna sound something like this. It's a very simple patch I designed in pigments. Very, very simple. <laughs> okay, so it's really not doing anything because it's just, I mean, it's not not doing anything, but it sounds pretty simple because all it's doing is playing this like detuned signed wave. And now you hear that every eight bars, it jumped up to a different root note, okay? So how do I make that a little more interesting? First of all, we'll add a chord so that there's more options for this arpeggiator to scroll through. So now it's gonna add all of these as input um, from whatever root note comes out of the MIDI source. And then the arpeggiator is going to randomly scroll through all of them at this rate. So that's gonna sound something like this. Okay, so that's already a lot nicer, but to make it even more interesting, we can add some LFOs. So this is the LFO MIDI uh, Max for Live device, which you can find on the Max for Live uh, tab here. And what this is doing is scrolling through the rate uh, really fast right now. So it sounds like this. Not bad, but it sounds a little bit random. So let's smooth out how this works by adding another LFO, which is going to control the rate here. Um, so this means that it's going to go like this. So now you see that this rate moves at a slightly slower rate. It, it varies at a slower rate, and that means that uh, it changes rate less. So it just sounds, to me, it just sounds a little bit more um, legible and a little bit more workable. Okay, so now that I've got that sounding kind of interesting, we can just essentially duplicate that with a slightly different patch. That's what I did here with this low one. All it is is a similar instance of pigments, but with the coarse um, down an octave, so it sounds a little bit more like a bass. Basically, I'm gonna go and add effects like the LFO, like the random, like the chord to all of my different tracks, and that's gonna add variation to each instance of pigments that I use. Um, 
Here, same thing, except in this pigments patch, it's a little more interesting. It's more of an arpeggiator, and it's gonna sound something like this. Okay. So this is using this LFO inside pigments. I've got it free running so that the filter goes up and down the cutoff and resonance, as well as the wavetable position. Now to make that go in and out so it's not just playing the whole time, I've added this utility and an LFO on the gain of the utility. So the LFO is going to mean that this utility is going to go from all the way off to uh, audible over the course of a pretty long time because it's at 0.01 hertz. Uh, okay, next, just to add a little bit more randomness, I'll show you how we can use the bouncy notes as well. Uh, it's really the same thing as the random MIDI effect or anything uh, that we used before. I just added the bouncy notes MIDI effect, which is new in Live 11, and this sounds really cool. Again, I've just got a relatively simple instance of pigments here. But it's gonna drop balls and then press the notes that it drops on. And I love that just to add a little bit more variation. I've adjusted the parameters on these three bouncy notes tracks such that um, they're gonna be a little different. So this mids is a little bit more random uh, as well as the highs and the lows is a little bit more simple and less voices so that we don't hear it quite as much so that it doesn't run into the rest of the bass. The final thing that I did to make this a little bit more interesting is use the multi-map device. So I added four instances of this multi-map device and mapped them to different parameters around the uh, project. So for example, I have add gain variations here. And what this is doing is controlling the depth parameter on the LFOs that control the gain that I showed before. So for example, let's see if I can see it. This depth parameter is, which one is that going to? That is going to here. And that means that it's gonna go from zero to 100. So this gain here will vary more. And I can change that using the multi bap device by adjusting this input knob. For now, I'll leave it at 98. Um, similar thing with change key. I've got that mapped to the key parameter of the keys and scales devices that I'm using. That way they all stay synced, but they can all vary more. So if I add more variation here, it's gonna mean that I can change key simply by moving this knob. Same thing with the add octaves. Um, these are going to an, uh, a random MIDI device. Right, so for example, this one, where there's one choice and scaled by 12, so it will go randomly up and down by an octave. Uh, and when I turn add octaves up, I'll get a lot more octave plucks. Okay, so just to recap, the way that you make Skynet is with LFOs, multi-maps, arpeggiators, random and chord MIDI devices, and of course our sound source, Arturia Pigments. Uh, I also dressed it up with a few effects, which you'll see in the project. Uh, if you're interested in trying this out, I highly recommend doing what I just did and using existing Macs for Live devices. And we're gonna give you this project file in the description so that you can get it started and try it out yourself. Uh, you could record it, use um, the output as samples using, for example, like a resampling audio track or something like that. Uh, or you can just leave it on the background so that you have some ambient music while you're going about the rest of your day. So I uh, hope you like this technique and I hope it works out for you. Enjoy and have a great rest of your day.